Welcome to WLD 2370 Metallurgy Lecture number 15, Identification of Non-Ferrous Alloys. Man, we got a lot of notes. Woo! We're going to start with the best metal, aluminum. And aluminum alloys. Surface is white slash gray. Density. One hundred and sixty eight point five pounds per cubic foot. Compared to four hundred eighty seven LB. Cubic foot or steel. So you look at that, and it's less than half, right? So it's got a high strength to weight ratio. Not as strong as steel, but it's still very strong. So you got a picture of a square one foot cube, I believe 168. Point five pounds. It has lightweight corrosion resistant and a lustrous surface finish. It's got a heavy oxide layer that keeps it from, from uh, letting corrosion get at it. Good electrical conductivity. I mean, we've talked about this before, how it kind of has replaced copper in some situations, like power lines, for instance. Could you imagine if those were copper? How heavy it would be? Extremely heavy, right? In the middle of melting temperature? Twelve hundred twenty one. So melting temperature. One thousand two hundred and twenty one. Degrees American. So identification of aluminum alloys is done through a series. They're called the, well I call them a thousand series. I don't know if that's what they're actually called, but it's a number that is in the thousand. So Code number, and it basically dictates uh, what the alloys are in it. Versus major alloying element. So in other words, the thousand series is what they'll say. One X X X. None. I said there's nothing in alloy with it. I don't know what you'd use that for. That's there's always some kind of alloy to make. There's very very rarely is there an element that's useful in its pure form, right? Two thousand is 
copper. We don't do much with 2000 in welding or machining, I wouldn't, I wouldn't think. 3000 has manganese. This is a cheap aluminum, so we do a lot with the 3000 series for the welding. It welds fine, but if you want to bend it, it's, it'll snap like a toothpick. So, you guys know the alloys you machine with mostly? Is it usually 6061? I would think so, yeah. Uh, 5000 series. Whoops. 5. XXX. Magnesium. Whoa! Nice catch. 4000. I don't think machinists use this much, but the welders, that's what they use for welding wire. So 4000 series is going to be silicone, and that's why they use it, because silicone promotes the wetting of the weld. So they put a lot of silicone in that for the filler. That magnesium is a 5000 series. That's, good. That's another welding wire for extreme strength. 5053 and 4043. Mainly welding wires right here. And this is what the machine is used. 6XXX, and that's going to have magnesium. plus silicone. There's a 6061, that is what people use almost a lot. I mean, it's just, everybody uses 6061. It's got a good machine ability, good weld ability. If you're gonna bend stuff, you gotta get 6063. Costs a lot of money. They just put different alloys in it to make it so that it can bend better, right? 7000 series. Zinc. Eight thousand series. And I don't know why they always they always have an other, right? Other elements. 9000 series unused not assigned yet so in reflection welders you're going to see 4,000, 5,000 of wires. This is a cheap aluminum. So like, uh, if we do T-joints and things like that in here, we buy a 3,000 series because it's cheaper. And you, we know you're just gonna throw it out, right? And it's fine as far as strength goes. It just doesn't bend at all, so. Machinists are probably gonna see a lot of 6,000 series. These other ones are more specialized stuff. Think about a 2000 series with copper in it, it's probably what they use for electrical stuff, right? Because the copper would aid them. I don't know that, but I'm just assuming, I'm assuming that, but assuming doesn't get you anywhere, right? I'm curious if it says. Let's ask the Google real quick. What is 2000 series aluminum used for? Many industries 
sensors, including the aerospace sector, the materials are well known for their high performance and excellent strength over a broad range of temperatures. Two to ten percent copper. Knobs, clock parts, fittings, screws. Wow. Gears, compressor rings, electrodes, welding, and filler wire. I never used two thousand series player, but nothing about electrodes. <laughs> Who was that? Greasy. I'm not here. Oh. He's got one of those horns, huh? Does that mean he's about to walk in here and uh, I don't have my paper, it's gone. I have one of those for my wife when she's texting out online. That's enough. <laughs> Cadmium. Just give her. Okay. Remember I'm recording this, so that was don't screw bad. me. Don't screw me up. That was a bad chance. You're my wife. Alright, that's enough. <laughs> Blue. White, and then it says color. I'm assuming you know that's the color, so I'm not going to write that. I mean, all cadmium is used main main uses. Used for protective plating and screws. Bolts and washers. You ever seen the, the the bolts that are kind of blue? That's what it is. Cadmium oxide is considered toxic. Toxic. Density is 539.6 LB cubic foot. What was steel? So it's out here to steel. to a little melting point. Six hundred and ten degrees American, aka Fahrenheit. Machinists don't really care about the non-ferrous metals being uh, Poisonous, but uh, when the welders weld this stuff, it puts off a horrible smoke. Aluminum, if you take an aluminum big gun and you turn it sideways, it'll shoot little balls of aluminum all over the place, and this big puff of poisonous smoke will come out. Same thing with cadmium. You weld it, it's like one of the most toxic things you can do. It's just like the zinc stuff, right? The smoke is so thick, it's almost like a particle. So it's Bad news. You want to make sure you have ventilation of it with any of these metals, if you're welding. I'm trying to think, could you get it to smoke if you had a bad carbide? Probably, but it wouldn't put off nearly as much smoke as it would if you were actually welding it. But chromium. Most people know what chrome is because of the um, the hip hop movement. You want chrome dubs on a 1980 Impala, right? Yes. 
most people don't realize that when they chrome things, it, it's almost polished so much that it looks chrome before they chrome it. It's not as easy as just taking it and dumping it into a vat of chrome like people think. They actually polish it to the point where it's basically chrome before they chrome it. If you chrome something and it has a scratch in the surface, it shows up like a blinking light when you pull it out of the chrome. So. You don't just dip stuff in chrome and then you have the mirror finish like you think. Maybe you don't think that, I don't know. I feel like people think that though. If you've ever seen a place that has, or been to a place that does the chrome and stuff, you'll see the parts and you'll think they're chrome before they're even put in there. That They polish them like that. Hard, slightly grayish metal that can take a brilliant finish and is very corrosion resistant. As soon as you hit a pothole in the city of Jamestown, what happens to your chrome rims? Done. Now, there's no potholes around here, is there? Ooh, our government takes care of us. That's why you don't see 20 inch dubs on chrome in a 1980 Impala around here. You gotta go down south for that. Better roads. Used for electroplating. That's just what we were talking about. That's the 442.7 pounds per cubic foot. Melting temperature. Next, cobalt. Anybody know what cobalt's main application is? Machinist? Drills. Drills, cutting tools. If you have to drill through something really hard, what do they do? They say, you gotta get a cobalt drill bit, right? If you get a whole set, it costs like I, don't know, I guess I don't know how much, but it's a lot of money. I haven't bought them before. Let's look them up. Cobalt drill sets. Cobalt drill bits set. Ah, shopping. That, that's a big one, though. 709 bucks. Now, machinists are allowed to have fancy stuff like that. Welders are not allowed to have that because they'll snap the drill bit off in two seconds and then, you know, throw it in the scrap bin and hide it. Then you don't have that bit, and then it'll be like a 3 8 bit, the one you always need. Then you pull up the end action, it's gone, right? Do you have that problem with the machinist stuff, or the one you always need is gone out of the index? Yeah. 3 8 every time. Every time. I don't know, there's a couple prices. That's a pretty cheap one, but they don't have, this little bit very big. That's the one I have in my office right now, $200. That's only one, two, three, four, five, six. So I don't know, maybe 15 drill bits, 200 bucks. Let's do, uh, regular drill bits, 800 It came back with the same ones. There we go, 10 bucks. See the difference? All right, you get it, right? 
So cobalt is silver slash white. Primarily used for alloying with steel to make high temperature resistant cutting tools. I've seen people run the machines out there backwards and like weld the tools to the parts. <laughs> Literally it welded it, did a friction weld. I'm trying to think of the person that the person that did that did that and then yelled at me for not having the plate prepped. I was like, you're the one that ran it backwards, right? So the fact that they can even spin that backwards is kind of annoying, right? Because how many people have seen them run that? But if you run one of the bits that's got like 10 carbides in it and you run it backwards, the, when you touch the part, it shears all the, the bolts off into the actual holes. Then you gotta manually try and get them out. But when they say high temperature, you're creating heat when you're drilling that, right? That's why it can take that. That's why they, they use it. Intensity. Oh, another thing with the color, I remember last, I don't know, in years past, somebody said, Cobalt drill bits are like gold. It's because they're alloyed into the steel. It's not just cobalt. So um, if you're looking for a cobalt drill bit, usually they have a gold color to them. That's how you know they're cobalt. They're cobalt. Yeah. Anyway, density, 543.5 pounds per cubic foot. I'm gonna do. Ooh. Melting top. Two thousand seven hundred twenty-one point six Fahrenheit. Columbium, and this has two names. I've always heard it called niobium. I don't know why it has two names, but it does. Slightly bluish. This is a more of a weird one. Ductile and malleable, which we all know what that is, unless you got it wrong on your test. It can bend, shaped into forms, right? Used for nuclear reactors. Density. 523.8. Ooh, I like that. Melting top. Lost it. Lost it. 3,000. 567.5 degrees Fahrenheit. Next, we have.
copper. Now these coppers and brasses, does anybody know how they're identified as color? This is where some of the metals where people like will argue about it. Copper is considered reddish. Now people that have seen copper will say it's gold or it's green if it's been corroded, right? It is considered reddish. A gold bronze. Bronze is a different metal. Quit swearing. Just stop. So it says on the old Google search. They're saying reddish brown. <coughs> We're going reddish because that's what the book says, and the book is always right. Was that a wiki fact? That is wiki. You want to go past wiki? That's wiki too. Pinkish orange colors. With, with, well, that's that's a that's a forum, so we can't count that. Minerals, reddish brown. Minerals.net. Well, They've got to be right. That must be full of process, no? Well, I mean, if you look at where's the is that ore? Let's go images. Look at the penny. That's kind of reddish brown. Like I said, the colors on metals aren't what people normally think of. It's just what it is. <laughs> that is, we know what that is. It's blister copper, right? We went over that already. So that's kind of like a somewhat refined. You can see the reddish color in it. We know it has high electrical conductivity. I guess if you come out of this course and you don't know that copper conducts electricity, that's bad. Right? High electrical conductivity. Melting temperature. Nineteen eighty one. The year Cook was born. Mm -hmm. Were you born in eighty one? What year? Seventy eight. Oh man, that's not a good year. Wow. Should have been 1981. I guess I should have put Fahrenheit down on because God knows it'll cause confusion. Density. Mm -hmm. 554.7. Haste. So bronze was just brought up. It's the color of bronze. Have they ever scrapped bronze stuff before? They're going to ask you, what color is it? Red or yellow, right? That's what they're going to do. So it's red to yellow. So let's look at brass real quick, because it's basically, I figure 
pop up. Yeah, there it is. Brass versus bronze. Very similar. Brass is an of copper and zinc. Bronze is copper and tin. So they're very, they're very similar. Uh, yellow, brass versus red brass. Plumbing, they make water beaters out of them. So anybody that's in the you know, plumber's union, when they take water beaters out of your house, they take them home and they scrap them. They literally make money doing that. I think they're allowed to do that. Red brass is actually bronze, because it's composed of copper and tin and zinc. Yellow brass is an alloy of copper and zinc. So they're very similar. So I, I, the difference in scrap is probably pretty small. Yellow brass is famous for musical instruments like bells and horns. I was going to have Witherall take uh, Stainless back today. He could have asked, but he's not here. Hold on. Ready? Well, maybe we can still do it. Used for bushings and some welding wires. Raising your odds, right? Bushings, why are they using it for bushings? Because it's soft, right? Brass bushings, right? Density. 548. House per cubic foot, melting time. Whoa. and now Indium The Indium Corporation for Solder and Electronics Assembly. Whoa. Is the softest metal. Let's see here. Corn zinc sulfide ores. Transparent conductive coatings. No biological role. Applications stabilizing non ferrous metals, protect damage against corrosion. It doesn't have what I have. What's 
look up there. Dry lubrication. Dry lubrication. That's not what I thought it was going to be. Solid lubricants. Graphite. Curious to see that's wear resistance. Drive lubricants. I, I learned the hard way on one of those. That's uh, I had a grinder, and uh, I said, make sure you use a dry lube on that. What does this guy know he's talking about? WD-40, right? I put a wire wheel on. I turned the grinder on. The wire wheel shot off and went flying across the room. I guess I should have used a dry lubricant, huh? Wear reduction application. Melting temperature. That's why they were saying for their solder applications on that last website we just looked at. It was 311 degrees Fahrenheit. In order for something to be considered to solder, it has to melt at below 850 degrees. So that would make sense why they're using it for solder. Brass is above 850 degrees. So that's considered brazing. So what's 850 degrees? It's nothing. It's got to be below or above. So 850. Nothing. I said that to a guy once and he just stared at me like, really? So I asked him, what's 850 then? That was called being a jerk in class, right? Nobody knows anything about that in here, right? Huh? Lost it, lost it, lost it, density. Four hundred fifty-three point nine. Lead, also known as lead. cut but it also sat right that's what happens when it sits it turns all dark like that so there was a there must be a crystal that's called cut lead because there's more crystal on there than there is lead that's a good one though look at this this person's cutting the lead with a Putty knife. I think it's soft. High malleability. Main application, what do you think it has listed? No. That's what you would think, though. Batteries. No. Used. To shield X ray radiation. I 
think about a nuclear plant or something that they would have to have for life. Plus all your x-rays, you get an x-ray, they throw the lead vest on you, right? Makes you really feel like you're getting cancer, doesn't it? You're like, okay, I got this giant vest on me, they're shooting me with x-rays, this ain't good, right? Melting temperature. Six twenty one. Lead used to be used in a lot of solders as well because of its low melting temperature. They're trying to get away from that. Now they're using tin. It was lead and tin is what it used to be. Now they're using like silver solder. But again, it melts below eight hundred and fifty degrees. But when they're sweating together pipes in your house and your drinking water is flowing through it and it's held together with lead. Just says not good, right? Now it's all plastic. Pax, right? They've gone from copper tubing to Pax. Sister, it was paint chips. Yeah. Used to be used in paint, and although the chips are very tasty, they should be avoided at all costs due to their toxicity. Density. Anybody ever buy a house? First thing they make you check off on. Is there lead paint in this house, right? They make you sign a waiver say, stating that you are sure there's no lead paint in the house. So if your house is older than like, I don't know when they stopped using lead paint, it was a long time ago, but everybody's seen it. It looks like when it's cracked. I'm sure you've seen a house like paint. <clears throat> Whoops. Paint. Paint. To the chips. That's why they say don't eat the chips, right? Because that's how it flakes off. Have you ever seen a house like that? It's easy to scrape off, but it's basically coming off anyways. But that's why they say don't eat the paint chips. It's because of the chips like that. If you're eating paint chips of any kind, I mean, that's just, it's a red, it's a red flag. I mean, it's, don't eat paint chips, period, you know. <laughs> Density. Now we all know that lead is known for its density, right? It's heavy. 707.7 .7 pounds per cubic foot. Now picture that in a one foot block that's this big. 700 pounds. That is freaking heavy, right? For a one foot block or something. Seven hundred and seven pounds. The last non-ferrous metal we're going to go over is magnesium. Magnesium is very tough to identify comparatively to what metal? Magnesium. New. Aluminum. We get parts all the time that people think are aluminum and they and people are confident in it. It's aluminum. Here, fix this. And if you weld magnesium with an aluminum wire, you'll weld it, it'll be fine, and then all of a sudden it'll go. <laughs> and you look at it and the well will be just loaded with little cracks. Just loaded. It looks like a piece of glass that's still intact, but somebody hit with a hammer. I mean it's just loaded. It's, there's a part of a car that we've done a number of times. I want to say something about the transmission that is usually magnesium. So I, whenever I get a car part, I always, I'm always i very careful. I'll, I'll weld a little spot on it or something first and make sure it doesn't go tink tink. Because if you put a giant weld in, it's just shot then. You're, you're done. Now, we can weld magnesium with magnesium wires, but if you don't identify it first as magnesium, it's bad. You're going to destroy it. So, 
machinist got to watch magnesium just react right the chips. They let that fire. So like if you have a big bin like machinists have out there, you light it on fire, it will go woof. Bad news. Color. Silver. White. Just out of curiosity, let's go back to aluminum. Silver gray, so. Or white gray. I don't know. Silver white. Very difficult to identify. Strongly resembled aluminum. But is much lighter. That's probably why they're using it on that car part. It's lighter, right? I know one of them was off of a race car. That one we butchered. I mean, we put a, like a 12 inch well on it and woo, it just went, blew up after that. Just ting -ting 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 for like five minutes. I was walking across the room, effort stopped. I hear ticking. Still doing it. Yeah, great. Used for lightweight applications. Has problems with machining. I've never asked a machinist why they have problems with the machining, but we sh I'm, I'm going to make that my mission. I'm going to go ask it, uh, somebody today. I won't mention any names because we're on camera. Density. Now, it should be lighter than aluminum, right? 108.6 pounds per cubic foot. What does this thing want? Hyphen? Oh, it wants it all one word. Lightweight is one word, apparently. I don't know how. It's light, weight. It's two words. Google cannot be wrong. Melting top. One thousand two hundred four. Fahrenheit. That's all I have to say about that. Next, it's going to be destructive, non destructive testing, and then you have your final test. On Monday, I'll hand it back on Wednesday, and we are done. I believe you did 30 classes already. Pretty amazing. Hey, don't act out of that. Don't act out of that, okay. I can print it. I was gonna, I'm going to print it anyway, so. For your online persons. Now keep in mind that this is identification of non-ferrous materials. I just gave you a big list of non-ferrous materials, right? So other than the, the properties of all these and their applications and what the color they are, there's also the fact that you now know aluminum, whoops, cadmium, chromium, cobalt, columbium, niobium, same metal, copper, bronze, Indium, lead, magnesium, those are all non-ferrous materials. Let's go back here to Columbia and see if we can figure out why it has two names. Columbia. 
related to niobium. Where's niobium? Also known as columbium. It's got the other way on Wikipedia. The book has it. Columbium, also known as niobium. I don't know why it has two names. Similar to titanium. I don't see anything obvious. I just said uh, something about power. Where? Where was it? Said, uh, keep going up. Uh, I concluded that, I don't know. Wait. I think it was in the first sentence. Yeah, I saw something up there. Also known as Columbia. It's coming out of this. Well, that's the sentence in the second paragraph. Right there, okay. Naomi was officially adopted as the name of the element in 1949, but the name Columbium remains in current use in metallurgy in the United States. So it's in our book, it's Columbium, so that's what they're talking about. Scientific findings clarify that Niobium and Columbium were the same element as distinguished from tantalum. For a century, both names were used interchangeably. So, I guess I don't know why it had the name in the first place, but. It comes from Greek mythology. So it's Where's that? Tap. Yeah. Hence, the former name Columbian comes from Greek <coughs> mythology, specifically Niobe, who was the daughter of Tantalus, the namesake of Tantalum. So basically, the name is interchangeably used. I don't know. 